if you look inside these boxes, you will find a little surprise. Hey guys, it's DT back with another Lego set for you guys. I am really excited for this one. I bought it a while ago, but it got lost in the mail and it finally arrived today. So I'm pleased to present the Lego Star Wars UCS Razor Crest. It's set 75331. It's recommended for ages 18 and up and it's 6,187 pieces. Now Evan built the smaller version of this not too long ago. Uh, if you guys missed that video, check it out. But uh, since this is 18 and up, you know who has to build it. Uh, let's give you guys a look at the back of the box here. It looks like this thing is about nine and a half inches tall and 28 inches wide. Now that is a big set. Not as big as the Imperial Star Destroyer that we built, but uh, for the Razor Crest, which is a smaller ship, I think it's pretty sizable. But it's not just pretty on the outside, there are some cool things on the inside as well. It looks like we also get a few minifigures with this set. Of course, we get Mando. We have Grogu, which we got in the other set as well, but uh, this one has the little pram. We have Quill, who gets to ride on a buildable blurg. And it also looks like we get uh, Nebula in handcuffs. No, that's not Nebula. That is the Mithral. On the top of the box, we also get a closer look at some of the minifigs. And in case you didn't know how big a minifigure is, here it is, actual size. How many bags does it take to hold 6,000 Lego pieces? All right. Everything comes in two boxes. Here we have a picture of the ramp with Grogu coming down. On the other side, we've got the Razor Crest landing. We've got Mando holding Grogu. And then, of course, you got this one. So in box number one, we got a couple little instruction folder thingies. So here's what it looks like. Square bound book. We got some stickers here. Bag 18, bag six. Let's see what we have in this box. We got book number three and book number four. We got our little black plate. So not a lot of double or triple numbers, so maybe not as many bags as it seems, but there is a lot here. So uh, without further ado, let's build the Razor Crest. Here is the completed Lego UCS Razor Crest. Let's start off with the minifigures. So first up, we have the Mandalorian Din Djarin. We have gotten this guy in a couple other sets. Of course, this is his pre-shiny Beskar armor version. It looks like they changed some of the colors on his sleeves, as well as added some printing on his shoulders and forearms. The rest of the printing looks very similar, but this time, when you remove his helmet, you actually can see a face. And it also comes with an extra hair piece so he doesn't look bald. I guess this is if you want to recreate the scene where he takes off his helmet. Uh, the helmet also has some added printing there on the top. They also made the front portion a little bit more narrow. So kind of cool we get an updated Mandalorian with this one. Then of course we have Grogu, the last time we did this, we thought his name was Baby Yoda at the time. And you can't really do too much with him. His body is all kind of one solid piece. Uh, you can't move his arms. You can rotate his rather rubbery head. Uh, his ears are a bit flexible, but uh, that's about it. He's just like a single piece there, fits on a single stud. But the cool thing is we can build this little hovering pram and we have it on this little clear piece. So it kind of looks like it's floating when you put it next to Mando. And there is a little one stud jumper in there, 
where he can sit. So he doesn't have his little blanket or anything, but uh, still looks pretty cool. Uh, then we have Quill. He's a rather odd character. <laughs> he's got the short legs that don't bend. He's got his nice outfit, some nice printing on the front and back. He has this little backpack that you have to put on before you put on his head. He's holding a little wrench. He's got a little headpiece with uh, some goggles there. His head looks a little bit strange. Maybe it's because it's elevated a bit due to that backpack piece, but I think uh, his head just looks really big. He does come with this nice buildable blurg, which actually counts as one of the minifigures. They say there's five minifigures in here, so they count little Grogu as one as well. Yeah, they could have had a sculpted blurb that didn't really move like they do with a bunch of different uh, Star Wars creatures. This is a cool little character. You can kind of move his tail around. It's on a ball joint, as is his neck. Uh, there's a little piece on the bottom preventing you from kind of doing a whole 360 with his neck. But uh, you can kind of pose it around. You can't open his mouth, but you can see the nice little teeth. His eyes are printed. And he's got uh, one little stud in there, so you can attach Quill. And it fits right on this larger platform of the display stand. And then finally, we have the Mithral. Uh, he's got the handcuffs. He's got some printing on the front and back of his little suit. He's got the blue head with some face markings on the front and back. It's kind of interesting. I'd say you get three minifigures a little extra Grogu and Pram, and then of course the buildable Blurg. So here is a look at all the minifigures, or the three minifigures, and the little extra build and the baby Grogu. They all fit on this stand very nicely. All right, so that's enough for the minifigures. Let's get on to the main attraction of this set, which is the Razor Crest. So uh, here's a look all the way around this thing. I think it looks fantastic. Very sleek and smooth considering it's a Lego set, especially these big engines here on the sides. They look really nice. Uh, a little complex during the build. You gotta build layer upon layer and then cover it up with all these nice smooth tile pieces. A lot of these panels on the ship are very smooth. We see a few lines of studs here and there, but for the most part, I think it looks really good. And from a distance, uh, very hard to tell that this is actually built out of Lego. There are a few stickers. Uh, the obvious ones are here on the sides. Proportions look right. I love all these angles and how all the little pieces kind of fit together. Very tight seams with uh, very little gapping. Uh, we got some greebling back here in some of these darker gray areas. We have the use of little skates throughout the set to add some extra detailing. I think it all looks really good. In the front, we've got the two forward mounted repeating heavy laser cannons. These were actually very difficult to build. They're just very little pieces, so you had to pay attention to what piece was going where, how it was angled, what side of the build it was supposed to be on. But I think they look pretty cool. On both sides, this front panel, I believe has a door that comes out. And uh, the same thing happens on the other side as well. And then that just folds back in. There is a little bit of movement here in this panel, but uh, nothing to be too concerned about. And then the other movable door is here in the back. This one just comes down and it's on these little hydraulic parts and you can kind of go up into the ship through the back. Uh, when you want to store it, it just goes back and closes up rather nicely. So like a lot of other LEGO Star Wars UCS sets, there are a lot of panels that you can remove in order to get inside the set. We can just remove this piece right here. Just comes off. The part in the back does have a hinge and can move up and down a little bit. It doesn't open up all the way, but uh, I guess enough for some ventilation. There's also a hinge on this front section right here, but it's kind of hard to get access through this little opening. So if you wanted better access, you could just remove this whole part right here. But it might be easier just to remove this whole top. This whole piece doesn't connect via any studs. It's just held in place by these jumpers on each side, which kind of just run into the piece right here. And that just prevents it from sliding off. Here is a look inside the cockpit. In the front, 
We've got a seat that can recline. Uh, you can also move the headrest around and it also swivels. We have a bunch of controls in the front, on the sides. We also have the little shifter and the shifter knob, which Grogu likes to play with. However, you can't remove the knob, but uh, it doesn't really matter because the Grogu figure that you get with this set, his hands are too small for this giant knob anyway. Right behind the pilot seat, we have two little passenger seats. There are also two little jumpers where you can stand somebody up. And one of the cool things is you can remove this whole thing right here just comes right out, either for easy access to put minifigures in the seats. Here we have a closer look at the door. And then right behind that, we have a little container of eggs. Once you remove that, it reveals what is below, which is a little bed, a ladder on one side. Before I show you guys the engines, we have this little center section right here with the little escape pod. Um, we saw that in the little set as well, but this one's a little bit more detailed. We just lift it out like this. There's actually uh, a little window right there. It's got two transparent pieces that actually just lay in there. And these pieces right here just kind of hold it in place. So it doesn't actually connect to any studs. We've got little thrusters there on the bottom. Nice little build. And then uh, if we want to put somebody in there, we can just, uh, Pop open the hatch, and inside we have a little place to put somebody, and we can cover him back up, just like that. We've got a little window so he can see, and then off he goes. And then when you're done, you can just pop it back in place. This whole engine structure comes off, just like that. This whole thing is pretty massive. One of the more complex parts of the build is building these engines. And of course you have to build it twice, one for each side. And we have a little transparent orange piece to show some fire. All of these little pieces are clipped in individually. There's a little stud on each one that properly spaces everything out. You kind of have to uh, space them out this way but then uh, once you get them in place, everything goes together nicely. Back here, we have some chains that are linked together. Same thing on the front here. One of my favorite parts of this ship, uh, I like the asymmetry in the color scheme of all of this stuff. Here's a look at the front of the engines. Some nice detail in there. Underneath, you can see some of those colorful bricks, but uh, you're not really meant to see those. We do have some red lights on the bottom that are visible. And then uh, we can also remove this piece right here in front, this piece. And we can also remove this part as well. However, when we do that, we can see all these colorful bricks in here. You can't really access too much in here. So there you go. You have the entire top of the Razor Crest open and exposed. So you can see all of the cool stuff inside. In the back, we have this cool carbonite freezing area. Uh, there are two little studs there, so you can put somebody there about to get frozen. And then uh, hanging right next to it, we have the frozen prisoners. Uh, they just clip in there, kind of dangling there. Um, this whole piece right here is a sticker. And again, just like in the smaller Razor Crest, we can kind of see they're at an angle. It's not just flat. And then uh, we get another one right here. And this one looks like it's got a Rodian, maybe a relative of Greedo. And then on the side, we've got the little green light and some controls uh, so we can unfreeze them when we want. Looking at the other side, we've got a little storage locker. This whole thing can come out so you can get easy access to it. And inside that locker, we have a bunch of artillery. We've got uh, little pistols, rifles. Uh, on top, we've got a little, I guess a little baby Yoda paper. I think it's supposed to be like a baby on board sticker. Uh, or maybe it's just a manual on how to care for 50-year-old alien children. To the right of that, we've got another pistol kind of clipped into the top, some controls, and then right below that, we have a space for Boba Fett's helmet and his rocket pack. And of course, this is uh, 
later in the series when the Mandalorian is able to recover these items. But uh, that whole part didn't happen in the first season. And then over on the other side, we have some sort of generator, some little mechanical device. There's a little table, a bowl, and some blue cookies on top of some boxes. And uh, if you look inside these boxes, you will find a little surprise. One of the parts you're probably never going to see because this set was meant to be in the landed position. We've got the underside of the ship and it doesn't look too finished. We've got some holes in there. We've got all the colorful bricks. Not too pretty, but again, uh, this set was not meant to be flown in the air. So the landing gear looks really good, but it's meant to be flat. As soon as you start angling this thing, uh, these pieces start to snap off. So you don't want to be popping wheelies with the Razor Crest. Other than that, we've got three solid feet for this thing. They are not removable. So if you wanted to fly this thing around, you have to kind of do some kind of modification. This is a $600 set, so you've got to like Star Wars or The Mandalorian. You also have to have a pretty big space in your house in order to put it on display. Uh, just for fun, here is the Razor Crest that Evan built a couple years ago. And uh, as you can see, this one is a lot smaller. I believe this one was about $100. Here we have the landing gear on this one is uh, three little skis. We have a lot more studs showing here on the sides. Uh, some stickers here and there. I think they did a good job with the proportions on this one as well. But there you have it. That was the LEGO Star Wars UCS Razor Crest. Uh, I think it's a fantastic set, especially if you're a fan of The Mandalorian. And if you guys want to see more of my collection, make sure to head over to my other channel, DT's Geek Show. I have a lot more big items like this that I review over there. So make sure to head over there and subscribe. Evan is actually working on another big Lego set. I just happened to beat him uh, with the editing on this one, but his will be coming up next. So stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching and we'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.